All right, I got it. You ready? Yo, Krubies, welcome back to another Crooked Tripod episode. I am Josh. I'm Erica. I should probably say welcome back to another episode of Crooked Tripod. That would sound way better than whatever jargon I just yelled out. I thought you... Didn't you just say that? Nah, I said it all jacked up. I was like, welcome back. You can do it again. Crooked Pie. Pie, pie, pie. Well, welcome back to Crooked Tide Pod. That's what I said. Tide Pod. That's what it should be called. The Tide Pod. You can get crystal crystal clean laundry right here on this podcast. Dude, that would cool you. Everybody, everybody comes here to just wash away all the dirt from the week. They're like, oh, hey, welcome. That's what we do. So, therefore... Everybody else can do it with us. That is true. That is true. This episode is the Stabbies follow-up or the post-Stabbies award. We recorded that. So we are going to come back here and talk about our favorite movies from 2023. Now, we don't want to confuse anybody who may have listened to our episode in December or maybe January. I don't know at this point where we just went through all of the movies from 2023. These are going to be our top five favorites with a few honorable mentions. Correct. Yes. yes. We think. We don't really know. Honestly, we just like don't plan. We just get on here and we're like, what should we talk about today? And we're like, you know what? Let's just wing it. Just wing it. That should be the... Okay, so the, the title of the show is Crooked Tripod, Just Wing It. Dude, I like it. Just wing it. We don't even know what we're going <laughs> to do. Or something like that. Sometimes it's the day of. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, we have an idea and then we change it. And uh, that this is just this scene. Yeah. This seemed appropriate because we just, <laughs> the, this episode will come out right after the Stabby's award. So it's like a post, it's like, you know, when they do like the UFC or the WWE fights and they have like the post fight press conference, that's what we're doing. Right. I like it. I like it. And this is now our personal favorites. That's true. That's Which true. Seems like it's a little bit more difficult for you than it was for me. It's making difficult. Making this list. Not it's difficult, hard. but. Well, yeah. the problem is I liked a lot of movies this year. I talked about that frequently throughout our other episodes, how I thought this year had a lot of great movies and picking my top five is going to be difficult because I have, what did I say? Six or seven that had basically tied in terms mm -hmm. of a ranking from me. Um, on, I'm on Letterbox right now. I think it's uh, Josh's Mannequin is my name if you guys want to find me. But uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight movies that would have tied for second place. Wow. Well, I know what first place is. Ah, clearly. And you know what I was thinking now? Like everybody knows that <laughs> Scream 6 is going to be my number one movie. So I almost thought like I'll just like get it out of the way and then rank the other ones. And like, you know what I mean? Just get no. Scream 6 out. That way it's not as riveted. That way it's more riveting to see what my number two is. Because everybody knows what number one mm. is, right? So, so should we change it up then and start with number one? Mm. I don't, cause I don't know what your number one is though, right? So it's just my number one and it's because I'm completely biased. That's okay. That's everyone knows you now. So they know mm. what's going to be your number one. Yes. I'm curious. What do you think my number one is? Um, I'm surprised. Well, I have not looked at your letterbox either. For the record, I'm looking at my letterbox. I have not. I just gave all my answers away too. And I have. I'm not. If you're on YouTube, you can go. <laughs> and if you really slow that down and pause it and zoom in, you can pause see it. every one of my picks. Um, yeah. I think it's either going to be No One Will Save You. I know you like that movie a lot. Infinity Pool, maybe. Um, I don't really know. What did you, Saltan? Maybe I think Saltan is a viable candidate. Um. Okay. Then again, I feel like it's going to be maybe a movie that I didn't watch. <laughs> that Husera, that Husera movie, you really like that? That could, that might be. I don't know. I feel like I'm just throwing all your your picks out now. I don't know. I think it will surprise me, which is why I want you to do your number one last because I don't think I'm going to be able to determine okay. what it is. And speaking of being on YouTube, anybody that wants to see, I look very pale today. I almost look sick. Like what is going on here? Is it because you don't have a hat on? Maybe. I also shaved my face today. That might be it too. So I don't have any like scruff. Oh, really that's what it is. Darkening up my face. So I look like a young school boy, a school lad. I was going to say, you look like a youngin today. Extra young. Abby tells Extra me young. when I sh shave my face, I'm very, uh, I look very young. Um, I'm trying to get to my camera thing here. Did it screw up yet? No. 
Okay. We're here. still good. Let me see if I can make myself look darker. <laughs> oh, I look even lighter there. There yeah, we go. Yeah. There we go. I got to darken her up here, boys. I'm looking rough today. You got a tan. Who needs a spray tan when oh, you've got you go. camera settings? That made me look way better, didn't it? I mean, look, they got a little red going on in the face. Now, having this Halloween poster behind me doesn't do me any favors either because it's orange and red and it brings out like all the red in my face. Yeah. Not that anybody. You really have cares. a point. It kind of does. <laughs> but I love it. It's like my one but, of my favorite movies. So. It's the centerpiece of the story. You can't change it. That's very true. Maybe Although, to a screen poster. Well, I have one. I have, and it's the same size, and the um, the strips are on the same exact spots. That way, I can easily move them, interchange them. But yeah. I'm like, you know what? Why? Like, I got all the scream stuff back here behind me. Look at all that. Yes. I got the micro yep. stuff right below it. Like, why, man? Felicia's right. I got to fix that mask right there. Look at that thing. Oh, yeah. It looks like it's coming off. The it's Michael the, one? Yeah, the mannequin head under is too little. I got to switch it out. I think I'm going to switch it out with the ghost face one because the ghost face mask is slenderer. Slenderer? Yes. Slimmer? Slenderer? Slenderman? Hey, who maybe. Knows? Who knows? I don't judge. Say we make up are. words here, too. We do make up words. We do make up words. <laughs> we dude. do. But so were there any surprises for you? Let's just let's get the stabbies talk out of the way here. Was there any surprises mm -hmm. to you of movies that were uh, won the stabbies awards? Anything that really shocked you? No, it it was pretty much what I intended the results to go. I really wasn't surprised. Were you? Um, no, not really. The only one I yeah. think that really surprised me honestly was, um, the favorite scene. I didn't expect the final theater scene of Scream 6 to almost get half the votes. Mm. Um, that's true. And what one for the fun movie? Uh, Totally Killer, I believe. Or no, Cocaine Bear, be Totally Killer. Oh, okay. I mean, it, that one, it kind of surprised me, but didn't. But the Totally Killer came out on Amazon. So that's harder for people to know about or watch compared to Cocaine Bear, which was a much bigger movie. I agree. But and I also anyway. think that within our like community of friends, the mo most of us picked Totally Killer. I think Jess was the yes. one that nominated. I can't find that freaking thing. I must be. Oh, it's right here. It's what I've been writing on all day. Um, not that I sit here all day. That'd be weird, right? If I did, I'd record myself and live stream. And I'm sure some lovely people would love to see that. <laughs> anyway, um, it's not on here either. Yeah, dude. Jess nominated Cocaine Bear. Yeah, but I think uh, I wonder how many people that voted are just casual fans, though, versus like, uh, you know, people that have like podcasts like us. I know a lot of the other podcasts that we talked to did vote. You know why I can't find it? Because it says most fun movie. I think I must have changed it. Nonetheless. Uh, yeah. Cocaine Bear got 50% mm. of the votes, too. So. And yeah. then honestly, I, followed by Wrath of Becky. So like. Even oh, Wrath of true, Becky true. be totally killer. Interesting. I, I would love to know who voted in the sense of that. What kind of horror fan are you? Are you a podcaster? Are you, a, like you said, a casual fan that maybe likes the big franchises and maybe watches a few mm -hmm. or, you know, hardcore <laughs> horror fan that watches everything? Because there were some movies this year that there were a lot of movies that were under the radar kind of movies that you ha I think you'd have to be a big horror fan to know what they were. Like yeah. when evil lurks, I think you really have to have been in the horror community to know about that one versus uh, scream, obviously. But I, I, I would always love to know that it's just interesting. Data like that is fascinating. <laughs> I am a data nerd as well. And honestly, I got really worried because um, I had created the survey I sent it to you guys to start sending out and then I was gone. Like you guys didn't hear from me for probably four or five days in a row because I had all those meetings yeah, and traveling. That's true. Right? So I got back that weekend because yep. I was planning on pulling the survey like Saturday or Sunday. And I got home from traveling mm. like Friday night or whatever, Saturday, Friday afternoon, whatever. And I don't think I looked at it again until Saturday and like three people had taken it. So I was like, oh no, like what happened here? So then I started sending it out to everybody 
Um, cause I send it yeah. out on the Instagram account, the Facebook account. I text it to people that I know watch movies or people listen to the podcast and they yeah. all start voting. And it was like for probably the first 30 votes, it was unanimously all my picks. Oh, wow. So like scream, <laughs> like scream. Cause I'm assuming if people didn't see it, like my mom doesn't, she listens to the podcast. She doesn't watch the movies. She listens to us talk about the movies. So I'm assuming yeah. she saw Scream on here and she picked Scream because that's she knows I would have been the one to have picked Scream, right? Um, yeah, right. Because I think a lot of my picks were Scream, right? I, if I believe, if I'm yes. reading it correctly, I think you and I think had something from Scream. I don't remember. Maybe it was Movie of the Year for him. I don't know. I don't he and remember. I both he picked, picked it. Yeah, he and I both picked, but I had it for Movie of the Year. Um. Director, a scene, I believe. Director, director, movie of the year, scene, I favorite kill, and favorite scene. Right. So four of my picks were scream. Yeah. yeah. And then sick was one of my. It's other also ones, the so. most popular. Right. I think after scream, it would be what saw might be the biggest name in that in our pile of 2023, and maybe insidious. I think Evil Dead. Depends th- if you've watched yeah. Evil Dead Rise. Yeah, I yep. think so. I think it would probably so, go Scream, Insidious, mm-hmm. Saw. Maybe Saw before Insidious. So probably Scream, Saw, Insidious, Evil Dead. And yeah. But like Five Nights at Freddy's was pretty popular too, though. And that was in... Oh. Megan was pretty popular. The thing with Megan is that it was at the beginning of the year. Everything at the beginning of the year, everybody forgets about. I totally forgot about Cocaine Bear. Because it was at the beginning of the year. I actually thought that was from 2022. <laughs> when I saw it nominated, I was yes. a little confused. You were like, what? Because I, I forgot. I completely forgot. I didn't realize how many movies came out this year. Mm. Or last year. Confusing. There was a lot. And then, and I mean, it, even it like... Did. Even like the fall of the House of Usher, I feel like was pretty popular amongst people that watch or on Netflix. That thing was all over Netflix, so... Yes. Oh, that show is amazing. It is. Felicia is watching yes. it now. She's been texting us nonstop. Yes. I had a feeling she would like it. Hopefully she likes it all the way through. I don't foresee her not liking it. I think it. she will. It's pretty yeah. it's pretty consistent all the way through, I think. Yeah. It's a very it that's a good way to describe it. It's very consistent. And like I said on that episode, it was just so dark for him. And we talked about this somewhere else along the way. It's just it was a different for him. I really enjoyed it. I like anything Mike Flanagan. I'm ready for and can't wait to see what his next projects are with Amazon. Let's see. Amazon. Yes. I think it's Amazon. Did you see the big yeah. uh, the big news today about Netflix? I did not. What now? They signed <laughs> a five billion dollar deal with the WWE starting in 2025. All of the WWE okay. wrestling shows that Charlotte and I watch every week, so Raw, SmackDown, uh, the NXT one, and then I don't know about the pay-per-views yet, but they will all be streaming on Netflix instead of USA and Fox. Oh, so wow. $5 billion dollars over 10 years. Okay. That's yes. a big acquisition. I- huge, huge. And the so they have a deal with Peacock through 2026, for the pay-per-views, the, they, they call them PLEs because you have to have Peacock to watch them. So they're not technically pay-per-views anymore. You just have to have a Peacock subscription. And um, okay. those are, they, ha- they have a contract through 2026 for that. And then I would imagine Netflix will acquire the rights to those two for even more money if I Once had to that's guess. over? Yeah. Yeah. Because not only that do means- they get like the new ones, they're going to get the whole catalog of historical events as well. So that means Netflix is going to get a huge, I would say, influx of subscriptions, subscribers. I would think. Members. Did you see their their last quarter? They posted like a 13.8. It was either a million or billion new subscribers. I think it was million. Mm-hmm. 13.8 million new subscribers in the last quarter of 2023. Wow. That's yeah. a lot. I wonder... Do you think they are the 
highest or biggest streaming service out of all of them? They were. I know they were. And then I think Disney caught up with them. But I don't know if Disney is because mm-hmm. Disney, Hulu, and ESPN all have bundle packs. I don't know if they were counting that. But I'm, yeah. I would have to think Netflix is will at least if they, I, I think they are. We can look it up. I mean, my camera's going to go crazy, but that's okay. Um, <laughs> you haven't glitched, you know, glitch danced in a while. So, uh, I'm telling you overdue. what, dude, I honestly think it's that stupid, bloody, disgusting website. Uh, yeah, we have to. Yeah, that site is awful. Great info, but it's just oh, garbage. I think my keyboard's dying with all the ads. Let's see. Oh, no. What streaming platform has the most subscribers? That is the number one asked question, apparently. Netflix, two hundred and sixty point two eight million dollars. Dollars. Yikes. Million subscribers. What's number two? I'm sorry. Two hundred and sixty I, I knew what you meant. <laughs> okay. Point two eight million subscribers. It's a lot. And that's they're yeah. international, so yeah, let's yeah see. that's think, a lot of people. I wonder what the second one is. Well, I have the top 10 for you. Oh, okay, please do. All t- right. Of course, there's ads please, all I'm over interested. this stupid thing. So everybody bear with me. Here I go. <laughs> My frozen ear. There it goes. You're just like on delay video. <laughs> all right, here we go. All right. Uh, number one, Netflix, 260.28 million subscribers. Number two okay. is... HBO? I, dude, I, it's not like this is the... Okay, hang on. IT service desk. Let's help Josh. Netflix's prices hike. Okay, I don't care about any of this. See, it's these ads. They just ruin <laughs> this. Yeah. You're ruining uh, the momentum. Oh, I bet you it's one of those stupid ones you, you have to scroll through, and I'm not going to do it. Um <laughs> struggle bus over here with the ads <laughs> oh hang on you know why because it automatically dropped me to the bottom of the page to number one which was netflix instead of letting me scroll through number 10 is stars oh. stars 15.79 million subscribers okay that's not very many no um, i didn't think they had one they do apple tv 25 million that is uh number nine that's pretty low. Okay. Okay, so Hulu, Disney, and ESPN are not combining all their numbers because ESPN Plus has 26 million. But okay. you have to have ESPN Plus to watch the uh, UFC pay per view. So that, that kind of checks. Uh, Peacock is number seven with 28 million. Okay. Hulu is number six, 48.5 million. Paramount Plus, 63.4 mm. million. With, uh, it's number five. Number four is HBO Max, wow. 95.1 million. Wow, that's number th- lower than I thought. Yeah, I thought it would have been more too. Number three is Disney, 150.2 million. No, okay. Duh. Number two is Amazon Prime, 200 million. Amazon. Mm. Forgot about them. The richest thing ever. I know. I totally <laughs> forgot. forgot that, but them. that shows you, right, that people overlook their streaming service. Yeah, for sure. We just did it's it. Too many. It's too many, dude. Yeah, we did. We just did it. Literally. Yeah, there you go. I really thought HBO was going to be higher than that. Hmm. Or Max. Whatever. Whatever it's called. Well, they still let oh, you well. share. So I wonder what... I don't know. what I know Netflix always ha- mm. at least was, but I wonder... Um, I wonder because they got, what, 13... What I say? 13.8 or 13.1 million new subscribers the last quarter of 2023. So I wonder... If uh, mm. them not letting you share accounts anymore has pushed pushed uh, their numbers up or what? I thought it would hurt them, but I don't. It doesn't look like it's going to do that, especially now with these new acquisitions they're making. So good for them. Yeah, excellent. So none of these uh, services are going anywhere. Basically, is what I'm gathering. It doesn't look like it. Which- and I read an article this morning because I was reading through the WWE acquisition or the uh, deal they came up with. And basically, the, it was just like the president or somebody of Netflix was like, with this acquisition, or not, it's not really an acquisition, they didn't buy mm-hmm. the WWE, but with this uh, deal we made with the WWE and some other things that are coming down the pipeline, he, he, basically, he said it doesn't matter if a bunch of smaller services or even bigger services like team up to combine their services to try to catch up with net, like they're not going to be able to catch them anytime soon. So I don't know what they have on the horizon, but it sounds like it's something pretty monumental. Interesting. 
Interesting. And you know, these services get you with exclusive shows, exclusive movies, and that's how you keep coming back to them. It's smart. And do you do you remember when Netflix you had to rent DVDs? Yes. Back? They mailed them to you. Yes. This was post Blockbuster that they closed down forever. And then this was the new way to rent movies. And you had to wait. You had to if the movie was out. There wasn't enough movies to send out. This was it, it was, was a, so crazy. It was fun to get it in the mail. It was a, it was <laughs> pissed me off because like you'd have to put the two that you want. You pick three. I think you pick the three that you wanted. Yeah. And if they didn't have the first one, they would mail you the second one. If they had the second one, they'd mail you the third one. Um, and then they yes. had like they still had the streaming service, but it was awful. Like there was never anything good yeah. on it that you'd want to stream right. uh, because they didn't put the DV the things that were on DVD. They didn't put on the streaming service yet. So it was just like. Correct. Yep. Terrible. And now, now look at look at us now. Look at us. Now. Everything's on streaming. Pretty we much. We all grew up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, welcome, We're all grown people. Welcome to the future. We're here. We're back in the future. We're back to the future. Do you want to jump into this episode? We're already in the episode, but do you want to you want to start doing our picks here? Let's do it. All right. Did you um? Did you? How many honorable mentions do you have? I have one honorable mention. That's it? Because I didn't know how many to pick. So I chose just one to keep it simple and not overwhelm myself either. Mm. Okay. So how many do you have? Well, I, clearly you have a lot. So <laughs> I got a lot, dude. I got a lot here. I don't know. Um, yeah. I'll do I can, one. I can put two. Okay. I'll do one. I'll just, I'll just do the one. Okay. Okay, I'm going to go... Uh, you want to go first or you want me to go first? You can go first. All right, my first and only honorable mention... <laughs> mm-hmm. It looks like you're struggling with this. We can do two am, to, to make it easier. Uh, no, no, no. Because <laughs> um, I could pick a two for a second. A two. I'm going to go The wow. Pale Blue Eye from Netflix. Christian Bale. It's the um, the show that was centered around Edgar oh. Allan Poe. I think it was a Netflix release. I just yes. really like movies from this this time period and this type of movie. It reminded me of like a less eccentric um, Sleepy Hollow, like a darker Sleepy okay. Hollow, uh, which, you know, I love that movie. I, give, okay. I have the freaking scene tattooed on my arm. Um, but I do love Sleepy Hollow. I love the feel of these types of movies where they're just... It's like kind of how Rob Zombie does like 80s and 70s and 80s movies because there's no technology. Yeah. I really like this mm -hmm. one even more so because it's like dated way back to where there's no no technology. Right? Nothing. <laughs> yeah, which is scary to me yeah. because like all this stuff is happening in this very small like town on this, this campus and you really, it's a whodunit movie and it's really well hmm. done to where you don't, in immediately figure it out. I'm sure people that are like, I feel like Jessica would watch this movie and be like, Oh, I figured it out in two seconds. Cause she does that. And I'm like the idiot that it takes the whole movie. But I also feel like yeah. I psych myself out when it comes to these whodunit movies. Cause I'm like, I want to be smarter than the movie. And I'm like, no, it can't be that person <laughs> because that would be too yeah. obvious. And they're not going to do that because it's too obvious. And then it ends up being so obvious that it hurts. Hurts. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, Christian Bale's always great. I don't think he does, uh, has probably put out a, a, a movie that, even if the movie was bad, he wasn't. Um, but yeah, I like this movie a lot. It's Agreed. very it's very long, though. That's why I haven't watched it. It was the uh, the time frame is what kind of turned me off. But see, that's when I, I completely forgot about it. So I'll have to add it to my Netflix watch list because I do enjoy Sleepy Hollow also. So I could go for that vibe. I'm in. I'm in, bro. I haven't watched Sleepy Hollow in years. Oh, dude, I watch oh, it at God. least once a year. At least one. Usually around Halloween time. Yeah, I watched that in theaters. It was awesome back in the day. Back I don't know day. if I did or not. When would that have come out? 99? Yeah, we were, we were kids for sure. But then, it was Johnny Depp. It was, you know, it's just that whole environment. It's like you're saying that time period adds to it. Would mm -hmm. you consider that a horror movie? Oh, a hundred percent. It was the, uh, I think the third or fourth movie we did on the HMC podcast. Mm, good to know. 
Yeah, I would consider it a horror movie. I mean, there's heads rolling. There's all kinds of stuff going on. Yeah, I would say yes, 100%. Perfect. Perfect. So my honorable mention, once I say it, you won't be surprised, but it's not, it's it's Haunted Mansion. Mm. While it's not super to an adult, um, I've discussed this several times on many episodes here. I really loved that movie. I found it uh, heart, what is it, heartwarming? Ooh, but heartwarming. I think it's a great yeah, it, but it was done in a nice way. I didn't find it cheesy at all. It just they did it in the right way where you're not thinking, oh, my God, this is the typical storyline and you know, like you're gagging kind of thing. It's just really well done. And what I really like is when I eventually have a kid and want to start them on horror, because, of course, that's going to happen. I think this is a great movie <laughs> to start them mm. because there were some scenes that were spooky i thought for a kid and i think it's a great introductory introductory to horror and uh of course i am a disney fan that's one of my favorite rides to ride so i also liked watching the ride be made into a movie and you can see the ride in the movie like the sets the costume some of the characters so i'm also biased with that but overall i really did enjoy this movie i watched it in the theater I watched it on the plane, actually, coming back home from the European vacation, Ooh. and it was still amazing, even on a little screen. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Haunted Mansion. <laughs> I enjoyed it as well. We watched it. Um, Abby and I watched it first. We didn't know if we were going to let the kids watch it or not. And then uh, we, I, she actually, I think, didn't finish it, but I really liked it. She went to bed. She was tired. But yep. the parts of it she saw, she did like. So I agree with you. It's It was better than I thought it was going to be. Yes. I went in with lower expectations on purpose and then ended up coming out really excited about it and really enjoying it. Really happy. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still sitting here like, anyway. what order am I going to put these movies in? Oh, no. First Instinct, number five. I think you're right, dude. Am I up? Oh, God. Here we go. Um, number five for me is going to have to be, oh man. Drum roll, everyone. Drum roll. Even I'm curious. I am more curious about your other four. This is going to hurt. I told you this was going to happen. I should have just took Scream out of it and uh, and did the other five. That made my life easier. Um, I, I gotta go (laughs) with, uh, Oh my god. This is so hard. It. This is so hard for me. <laughs> All right. I'm ripping the bandit off. Number five, Exorcist Believer. I really like this movie. Um, I know a lot of people did it. I still fully believe if you take out the twenty minutes toward the end where they brought back characters from the original movie and went into this whole Linda yeah. Blair monologue, um, I really feel like it would have been perceived better. Um I get what they were going for, and I understand that a lot of people didn't like this movie, and they've already, like, like David Gordon Green is already back, because this was supposed to be a trilogy. He's already backed out of doing the mm. next two. Um, oh, wow. But I thought the acting was really good. I liked the story. I liked how mean it was all the way through it, because I feel like even with the meanest of horror movies, there's some sort of light, either at the end of the movie or somewhere in the middle of the movie, and this movie just had none of that. It was like, we are going to be yeah. mean and brutal to these characters, and test their belief again. The, it's right in the title of the movie, Believer, all the way through the movie. So uh, I don't think you've seen this, right? I have seen it. You have seen it. You did not like it. I did not like it, but I do agree with the mean because there's. So if no one has seen it, we don't. But there's two choices that were made in this movie or have to be made, and they were hard. And you even you being the character is like, which one would I choose? And Mm. then when the dad admits something later, it was like, oh, I didn't expect that to be the choice. So I do agree. The the thing that I didn't like is actually what you said. Get rid of the whatever they were trying to do with the original and bring that in. I think if you would have taken that out, it it didn't need to be there. Mm. Why did you have to tie this to the old movie is beyond me. It was just... That's what made it annoying and like a cash grab, in my opinion. And you could have just taken that out and it would have made 
it wouldn't have made any difference. Like they should have just taken it out. I agree. They there were, was there really were, no purpose is what... They were leaning yeah. so much on the nostalgia of the first Exorcist movie that, again, it was kind of to the detriment of this movie. I really feel like it wasn't in there at all and they didn't even mention these characters. From I get what they were doing. This is supposed to yeah. be a trilogy, right? So they were bringing uh, Reagan back into it, right? At the end, obviously. If you haven't seen it, that's your fault. Yeah. But um, not you specifically because you <laughs> have seen it. But um, yeah. yeah, I get what they were trying to do with the whole thing. But I just, like I said, like the movie just was a like gut punch after gut punch after gut punch. And I really enjoyed it all the way up until the end because it's almost like it makes you wonder if the dad in the movie, uh, I forget the character's name, but if he hadn't already experienced something similar to this at the beginning of the movie and chose wrong, would he have been more um, likely to have made a decision like the other family did, right? Yeah. So Maybe, because that was a tough choice. Both were. And I was, sho- I was shocked with the end, that, with that choice and the outcome of it. And I will say I really appreciated the relationship of the dad and the daughter that it was an actual nice relationship it wasn't your typical i'm an angry teenager i hate you dad you're ruining you're ruining my life what about mom it was they actually got along yes she was curious about her mom but it wasn't that usual hateful right that i find so irritating because like, all right we know we get it <laughs> you hate each other y'all hate each other man don't hate mm-hmm. each other. Don't do that. It's okay. But yeah, number five. E- oh, wow. Exorcist Believer. <laughs> very nice. Very nice. I had a feeling that was going to show up somewhere. I know you really like that movie. I think you nominated for something too. Um, I don't remember what. I think it was a best story. I, maybe. That sounds like, uh, yeah, best story. That's what I would have. I did. Yeah. The Exorcist Believer right there. It is. Yeah. Bam. I thought so. Boom. Boom. Uh, my number five is the one uh, you can't pronounce or that you spelled out and had Seth try to say or somebody say <laughs> is Huesera, the bone woman. Okay. See, I kind of, I knew it was going to be on there. You did, you did. You did mention it. I really enjoyed this movie for the uniqueness of it. I think I nominated it or it was a runner up somewhere on my, in my stabbies. Uh, between this and when evil lurks because it was something different i liked the folklore in it it was a mexican folklore and it touched on motherhood in a different way without spoiling too much but a woman who's not sure if she wants to be a mother and it's not something that's addressed very often so it was interesting to see that point of view versus uh the pregnant mother who's super excited this was the opposite side of it and what comes with it And it had a lot of cool visuals. There was a lot of scary scenes and sounds. Uh, It's I would say it's kind of elevated, but it's nothing like uh, Midsommar Mm. pretentious. I would say it's like a hereditary elevated and even a little bit lower, like not that extensive. But I I don't know if that was a Shutter exclusive, but if it was, it was it was one of the good ones that they did this year. They're they're starting to change my mind. They they put out some good things, but Come then they on. also just put out a lot of bad things. Really, they're changing so your mind. They're not changing <laughs> your mind. Stop. I'm looking it up now to see if it's a show exclusive. <laughs> yeah, because I don't remember if it is. I know when Evil Lurks is, or maybe they just host it as a Shutter exclusive because they're foreign films. So I'm not sure. Husera, the bone woman. This was from 2022. You shouldn't have been able to nominate it. I don't know why that slipped through. What? That's what it says. It probably came out in 2023 what? on uh, streaming. It was probably one of those uh, film festival things. It says it's oh. available to stream on AMC Plus, which probably means it's on Shutter. I would imagine. I bet you're right. Okay. Oh, now I feel bad. Well, whatever. It didn't win anything. So. You didn't technically nominate it. It, it was slide. your runner up. True. So, but because I watched it early in 2023 that it came out. So it must have been that kind of like uh, something else that that happened to last year. Anyway. Yeah. Sick. Sick was the same way. It was released at the festival in 2022 and then dropped on streaming 2023. I bet this is exactly the same situation. 
there we go. That's that's the movie. I'm like, I know there's another movie that was there similar. So number five for me is Hoiseta, the Bone Woman. You did a great job. All right. <sighs> number four, let's go. You just want to bully me into making a Drum choice. Roll, everyone. Bum, 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 bum. My number four is Evil, or die. Evil Dead Rise. Boom. Boom. I nominated Alyssa Sutherland for uh, Outstanding Performance, I believe. Or no, that was Justin Long mm -hmm. for... What was it? Not Breakthrough? Breakthrough Performance. Breakthrough? Breakout. Breakout Performance, Alyssa yeah. Sutherland. Dude, she is great in or this break, movie. A breakthrough. <laughs> Um, the reason yeah, I left one off of here is because I didn't nominate it for anything, not to give too much away, but um, I've, I've made my all my choices. They're solidified because of um, I nominated them for stuff. So anyway, Evil Dead Rise, great movie. Um, it was exactly what I wanted it to be. It was There was great special effects. It was mean and nasty, yeah. and it had this disgusting scenes it was very much like the um the reboot from 2014 2015 when it, or 13 whenever that came out um with jane levy yeah. i love that movie it's one of my favorite movies and i'm glad that they went that direction versus going back and making it super corny so the acting in it was Agreed. phenomenal there were like just really really cringy scenes which you expect from an evil dead movie and just the way in which Alyssa Sutherland moved and talked, it was it was so good. And the, the use of children in it. And mm -hmm. I forgot to even mention this during the Stabby's Awards, but like the fact that it went there with the kids, because usually when kids are in movies, they, and this is very much like The Exorcist Believer, uh, when kids are in movies, generally they're untouchable. Like they don't, the, Correct. like bad things happen to people around them, which mentally impact what's going on. Uh, with their psyche, but the kids don't generally physically get hurt. And right. that it could not be further from the truth with this movie, uh, which I thought was, was good. Cause the whole time you're watching, you're like, Oh man, like generally children are even safer than like an animal, like a dog. Nobody wants to see a dog get hurt. That's right? true. But even the kids like yeah. outlast the dog. So in most movies, but in this movie, it's like, wow, like they, they really went there. And I appreciate that because I think, you and I had a conversation before the movie came out, before I went to see it. And we had had that conversation. Like, do you think they're going to go there with the kids? I think we were both kind of like, I don't know if they will or not. Like yeah. the, the parents are fair game or whatever. Um, it was going to be uh, set in a, an apartment complex. There was going to be a bunch of other people there. They could, these things could happen to, but no, they go there with the kids. And um, I think that it is to the benefit of the movie. So number four for me, evil dead rise. And it was a great movie theater experience. And they made the cheese grater mm. a terrifying thing. It was terrifying to begin with. You know, how scared do you get, right? You're getting closer to the edge with your cheese. You're like, oh, shit, there goes my skin. But they just, they put it out there. That was that was rough. And it was even on like the shredded it side, was. wasn't it? It was the shredded cheese side. Uh, yeah, it was. It was it, great, though. Like, was pretty that's what I love about about horror is taking simple objects that are in your everyday life and making them pretty scary. Do and you think, are you more afraid of the cheese grater or the potato peeler? The cheese grater. Oh, I hate this. See the cheese grater. I never have any issues with the potato peeler, dude. I lose part of my thumb every time I use it. <laughs> I go really slow. Mm. So that's why I'm, not as scared with the cheese grater, even though I'm not, it's not like I'm going there at light speed, but it's just, I don't know. It's so scary that all you need to do is look away one time. I mean, this could happen with any kitchen, sharp kitchen tool, but it's, it's all those holes in mm. on that thing. It's terrifying. And it's all over. The one I have is all sides. You can get true. different. That's true. Cuts of yes, cheese. Absolutely. You got the slicer. A you've lot. got the grater. You've got the yes. shredder. Um, Right, the fine cheese. Yeah, you yeah, know? for your parmesan, your parmesan yeah, for your Italian nights. Parmesan, yes, yes for your course. fettuccine alfredo. Naturally, naturally. <laughs> yes, great movie, great movie. My number four is sick. Ah, absolutely love this movie. We actually we've we did an episode on Evil Dead Rise. We did an episode on Sick, mm -hmm. and. Uh, if you want the full extensive version, go listen to those. But 
sick. I I had so much fun with it. I went into that one not expecting anything, and I came out pumped. I texted you right away. Oh, my God, this movie's amazing. (laughs) Why is this so cool? Uh. And... I love the story. I love the action in it. I love the main girl. Well, girls, because they were both amazing, but the main heroine I really liked. And uh, I love the length of the movie. It's the perfect length, well paced. Mm-hmm. Even though it's COVID, it's it's well done. It's not so much that it gives you like like what you've said in the episode and just over time. It gives you the flashback, but it's not enough to gross you out or overwhelm you from that time. It's just to kind of remind you, wow, we really went through this now four years ago. And that's right. crazy that we did that. But uh, loved it. It's a really fun whodunit scream essence, right? Because it's the same writer. Yep. And uh, I wish this had been released in theater, but it was on streaming. We got to enjoy it for free. And uh, I would watch that again over and over. It's a good, good, fun one. Same. Same. I think it's so well um, done because the first, I don't know, 15 minutes of it is really the only part where it's heavily COVID influenced. Mm -hmm. And I think it was true. The reason it was so well done is because it shows both sides of it. It doesn't say which side's right and which side's wrong. It just shows the hypocrisy on both sides of it, right? Of wear a mask, don't wear a mask. We're wearing masks outside, stay six feet apart. But if you're outside, you still, you know, like clean your groceries. Wipe yeah. your groceries off. Yeah, your cereal boxes. Um, but then, like, once they get to the house, I feel like for the most part, the COVID thing just gets put on the back burner, right? Because of the what's going on at the house. So, yeah, the great movie. Yeah. Woo-hoo. Okay. Number three. Top for, three. Top three. We're already there. We're already in the top three, and it only took us 48 minutes to I get know. there. How great are we, dude? <laughs> How great are we? All right. <laughs> Number three. This might be a shocker. I don't know. I was really, mm. really excited for this movie. I found out it was coming out like two weeks before it came out, and I texted everybody, and I was like, this mm. is going to be movie of the year. Calling it now. Cobweb is my number three movie. It was a sleeper movie, yeah. kind of like Sick was a sleeper movie. Cobweb did get released um, in the theaters, which I find really weird yeah. that it didn't do better or wasn't promoted more because it came from Seth Rogen's studio. Um, so you would think with him behind it, there would be more um, push for the movie, especially since yeah. it was so good up until, again, take the last 10 or 15 minutes out of it with the terrible CGI spider girl at the end of it. Like I don't know why yeah. they did that, they would have been so much better off just not showing her at all that up close. Like the scenes I feel like where she was running around the house and attacking people in the house were fine. It's when they get to that basement scene and you actually see its face that it's like, Oh, this is really, it was like worse than you would imagine it being. It's almost like laughable. It's so badly done. The end of it. Yeah, I agree. It it looked like a anime but real yes that because that's it exactly what i thought of do you remember when that uh weird woman yes momo thing was supposed there we go that's what it reminded me of so i I agree I, i think it had a lot of great uh moments in that movie i got scared in one particular bedroom scene i thought the ending it also was good it was just when they reveal her, just leave it a mystery or just leave her with all the hair forward and that's it. Yeah. Like, why do we, we don't leave it just like Samara from the ring in the ring, in the first ring where you just see mm-hmm. the, the hair and how she's crawling yeah. around, which was done really well. The storyline was so good. Lizzie Kaplan was amazing in it. Like when she is on the screen, she is like captivating and she like demands your attention. And the whole time, you're trying to figure out like what is going on. Like even the story, once you find out what this thing is and why it's where it is and maybe these parents, like while well, the parents weren't great people and how they handled the situation, up until you find that out, you truly believe that they're like these evil, awful people that have done something, which again, what they did wasn't great, but I feel like yeah. you kind of, understand where they're coming from as to why they did what they did. Right. But like 
I don't know. It was, just, it was really well done, and I really enjoyed it. I wish that it had gotten better received. Um, but like I said, Lizzie Kaplan just shows how I completely drastically underrated actor, in my opinion. Um, but yeah. yeah, number three, Cobweb. Three. Very nice, very nice. My number three is When Evil Lurks. I feel like this one, it was a heavy hitter at that came out at the end of the year. It was a streaming uh, Shutter movie. Uh, foreign from Argentina. And the thing with this movie, even if you don't like it, it has so many shocking moments. And two of them are with, ch- they went there with children mm. in this. That is very shocking. That I I, I had to, I, we, we talked about it during the stabbies. You had to really watch the scene and go, they, they did that. They really did that. It's very shocking. I consider it a possession movie, but it's not your traditional possession movie, which is why I liked it. It was a different storytelling of it. I liked the characters in it. I was rooting for them. The The special effects were amazing, I thought, the, and they went practical for the most part, from what I can tell. And uh, it's violent. It's mm. violent. It's disturbing. The act scene, the dog scene, the kid brain scene. It, it, there's so many scenes in this movie that are worth watching even if it's just to get a bit of a shock factor again because they went there with kids like you were saying with exorcist believer maybe they're starting to push the envelope with that because you have to be more shocking now right in horror oh absolutely you have to find ways to get there and unfortunately when you push it with kids that usually gets people emotional (laughs) emotionally involved So, uh, yeah, When Evil Lurks was my number three. Really enjoyed this movie. I would have loved to have seen something like this in theater because of how it's filmed and it's really cool to watch, especially it's loud. When all these things are, certain scenes are very loud, so it adds that, oh, my God, this is so fucked up that this is happening, and it's loud, and you just didn't expect it to happen. Uh, But it's okay. You know, you got your home TV and sound system, then you're, you're all set. When Evil Lurks, number three. Number three. Everybody that has seen that has told me how good. I need to watch it um, because I think you've seen it. Mark's seen it. Jessica's seen it. Tawny and Felicia both saw it. So I think I need need to watch it. Yeah, just to see. Like I said, even if you don't like it, I think certain scenes will be like, oh, shit. Mm. Okay. Whoa. I would think for you. That's for anybody. I mean, that's what it sounds like. It sounds like it's pretty shocking. So I'm going to give it a shot. uh, Maybe this weekend. I don't know. We'll see. And it's not long. I believe it's an hour and a half, which is great. Can't beat that, right? Can't beat that. And right in the perfect slot. I wonder if shows like Stranger Things and maybe even The Walking Dead to some extent have kind of were starting to push the envelope with these bad things happening mm. to kids. Cause it's like stranger things. The whole show revolves around kids. Um, yeah. So I wonder if the, if those kind of like set the tone moving forward for it being, you know, easing into that. Obviously it sounds like this one goes really extreme, but evil, evil dead as well. Yeah. Even excess believer. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I guess we'll see. We'll see. 2023 is push, push the envelope. It's starting. It started it with the kid. Kids. I'm anxious. I'm anxious for 2024. I don't see, but I said this. I don't see how 2023 is going to compare to 2022. And then it did. And I, in my opinion, it overshadowed 2022. I think it did. There was better movies in 23 than there were in 22. It'll be interesting to see yeah. how 24 shapes up. Cause it, sitting here looking at what's out there, I just don't see how it's going to be as good as 23. I agree. Uh, there's really not much on paper so far that has been announced that they considered the big movies of 2024. I, I'm not motivated for anything. Maxine isn't even, doesn't even have a date. So I, you can't mm. even anticipate that Nosferatu, as I mentioned in that episode, I believe we mentioned it in the stabbies is that's the, the main one I'm looking forward to, but otherwise we already started with night swim, night fan, whatever that was. That's not good. <laughs> that was not good. Night swim, night f- <laughs> fan or swim, swim. F- swim fan is the one I was thinking of. Yes, night swim. Oh, uh, okay. Night swim. Yeah. 
Oh, here we go. Let's see. I'll I've, stay hopeful. <laughs> I haven't seen it. I've heard it's bad. I'm probably not going to go out of my way to see it. I'll probably watch it on streaming. Don't. But uh, for, for free, Wait for free. <laughs> I'm sitting here and I don't even know what the next movie I'm going to see in theaters is. It's probably going to be Godzilla versus Kong at this point. I don't know either. I uh, so I'm saying I don't I, even non horror movies. I don't. I don't know. I feel like this year might be a little blah. We'll see. Well, I think it's, it, uh, it was directly impacted by the strikes, though, right? Like, we are now in the lull because yeah. there were all these delays and all... Because like, of it. No work being done, that this is now an aftermath of that. So I think we're probably yes. destined to have a pretty dull 2024. But I think that just means that 2025 is going to be that much better, I'd have to imagine. Because um, everything's... I, I would hope so. Yeah, I feel like we're going to have like an abundance. We're going to fall into that situation where we were before where there's just too much. I feel like there's going to be too much, so things yes. are going to get overshadowed and overlooked. Um, yeah, so we'll see. Speaking of, that's a great segue, because speaking of being overshadowed and overlooked, my number two is actually uh, Sick, which was your number four. Woo-hoo! I love this movie. Yes. It's right up my alley. Kevin Williamson movie, uh, slasher movie who done it it had a, it was it was great and like i said i feel like they did a great job of incorporating the pandemic covid all those situations that we had all lived through and not only did they incorporate it and then kind of drop it um but they shed a light just on how kind of like crazy that time was like yeah. cuz if you were to go Let's say you didn't know anything about the pandemic. You didn't know anything about what had happened. And you went to the store like he did, like today. And you just went like Walmart, whatever your store is, or you like Food Lion. I don't know what you guys have there. But like, let's say you go to the store there and people are, are acting that way. You'd be like, what is going on right now? Like, this is insane. Yeah. Yeah. And what's going to be interesting is, mm, let's say 10 years from now, I think that's far enough when whoever was a kid during the pandemic watches that movie 10 years from now and goes hey mom dad this really happened what is this what is this about Mm. is this is you guys did that and we yes we did that actually happened we lived through that we did those things we thought those things we assumed we what you said the back and forth it's it's going to be interesting 10 years from now to rewatch that even you. It doesn't just yeah. have to be a young person who had no real idea of what was going on, but even us that lived through it be like, wow, that's crazy that that's how it was for what, two years? Two years straight, I guess. Uh, I mean, f- for some people, it's still going on as crazy I guess. as that is. People are still, True. you know, do, uh, doing these things, yeah. right, wrong, or indifferent. Who I'm not a doctor. Uh, so. And then again, I don't know if I'd even listen to a doctor at this point because, you know, I think they're all quacks yeah. myself. Uh, but nonetheless, what am, who am I? Don't listen to me. I'm just a guy that talks about horror movies. Um, so, yeah, yeah, this is not the podcast to get medical advice, people. Honestly, you may want to do the opposite of what we say to do because we don't know what we're talking about. Oh, you do. You're in the medical field. Maybe they should well. listen to you, but not <laughs> me. Like, I don't, I don't know anything. Yeah. I'm just a stupid hillbilly, okay? Um, I do ice baths, for God's sakes. Like, I get in cold ice water and shiver for cold plunge. 10 minutes every uh, day. Mm-hmm. Anyway, um, what was I talking about? Oh, sick. Great movie. Yes. Um, Sleeper, I wish I would have got to see it in theaters. I don't think it would have done well if it had been put in theaters, um, honestly. But yeah, I liked it. I don't even remember. It was just like it. It, it was just like, hey, this weekend, a uh, new Kevin Williams movie mm-hmm. is going to drop on Peacock. Boom, and there it was. I watched it, loved it. I think did I recommend it to you, or did had you already seen it? Yeah, you right. Re- you put it in the chat because uh, I hadn't even heard of it. Mm-hmm. You said it was good. I go okay, I'll go watch it, and then text you, and we're like, let's do an episode. Okay, great. Yeah, there we it, go. It was very much. Um, it was very much like if Scream and what was the uh, movie that I don't think you liked it. I didn't mind it. Uh, bodies, Bodies, Bodies. Do you remember that movie? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I did not like that movie. <laughs> I, I feel that. like Sick yeah. was like they incorporated like the feel and atmosphere mm. of Bodies, 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 but like in a Scream realm almost. Like it wasn't... As annoying, because yeah. it's that it's that Gen Z generation, right? Like that's this movie centers around that. Um, 
I'm obviously old, I'm an old millennial <laughs> at this point. So it's funny to say, right? Because we millennials are always the young, annoying kids, and now it's the Gen Zers. Um, no offense to any Gen Zers listening. That's just you're going to be sitting here when you're th- in your mid thirties, <laughs> and you're going to be saying that about whatever the next generation is. It's just that's just what happens. Exactly. Um, I get it now. I get it. <laughs> right. Like yeah, these stupid millennials. It's, real. it's like eh, okay, yeah. right, but here we are. And then you got the old hey. freaking uh, curmudgeons. Anyway, number two is sick. Excellent choice. Excellent choice. My number two. It was hard to not switch this last minute because I just rewatched it last week uh, to record an episode on it, and I really wanted to make a number one, but I stuck with my number one. But my number two is Hell House Origins that came out on Shudder last year. I love this movie. I would say it's very much tied for first place because this is definitely my movie, my kind of movie. It's found footage. It's ghosts, scary clowns. I'm in it. It was so well done. It was more than I expected because I went in thinking this is going to suck because A, part two and part three of Hell House were not great. And... Be, you know, two, it was a shutter movie and VHS is faster. I know how it is with found footage. It can go very wrong, but I'll always go for it. But when I finished that movie, I got I was scared. It gave me all the jump scares that I needed. I liked the story. It actually made it more complicated and probably really unbelievable. But who cares? And then it <laughs> left it for more, which is even better. <laughs> Naturally, I'm like, yes. <laughs> More Hell House as long, yes, naturally, as long as it continues on this level, uh, it's exciting. I'm very excited for more. And uh, even on the second rewatch, I I enjoyed it. I actually increased the rating on Letterboxd because it doesn't bring anything new to the found footage table. I don't think you, I don't know what you can bring anymore at this point. But it was the right scares. They were able to still effectively throw scares and have a decent story that it felt like a refreshing found footage. So number two, Hell House Origins, the Carmichael Manor. Oh, thank you for Forgot adding that, that in because I was lost until you just said that. You were very excited for this movie yeah. to come out. <laughs> Remember when we were doing when in the news and I got to announce when it was coming out the following week? I was like, yes, it's here. Yes. You were very, <laughs> very excited for this. And I'm glad it lived up to your expectations. Uh, me too. Because I was also excited for VHS. Mm, yes. And then I was so sad. I was so sad. It's, it's so okay. Sad. It hurts it's me. Okay. It hurts me. I'll still watch them. All right, well, it's time. It's time for number one, and I'm sure that this is going to shock a lot of people. Um, it was hard Everybody for sit me. Down. It was hard Hold for on. me to decide. It came down to a couple different movies, um, but I just had to go with my gut on this. And my number one movie is Skin and Marink. <gasps> That is so much bullshit. You can't even keep a straight face. <laughs> uh, my number How did you one even say that without laughing. My number one hated movie was Skin. My actual number one is yeah. obviously Scream Six. Like, come on, everybody knew it was going to be Scream Six. The movie is fantastic. Builds on what they did with Scream Five. I don't really need to go on a big tangent. The acting is great. The storyline is great. The ending of it is phenomenal. I think I, I nominated that for my uh, favorite scene was this that last theater scene where they basically turn the stab museum into this kill box and you have to figure out yep. who the killers are. And then the part that I think doesn't get talked about enough is the fact that these killers locked themselves in this kill box, essentially, thinking that they had trapped the these you know defenseless kids in there with them when in fact they had actually trapped themselves in there with another serial killer who's like much better at it than they are um yeah and you can see that whole thing come to fruition (laughs) i also really like the route that jenna ortega's character takes throughout the movie um up until that final scene and it bums me out to no end that we're not going to get to see how that story uh, progresses because I would really like to have seen where Jenna Ortega went and where uh, Melissa Barrera's character went, but um, yeah, 
we're not going to get to do that. So you know what though? I think it ended just fine. That the way it ended, it, that could have been the end of that story very easily. She dropped the mask. She's leaving all that behind. They're moving on. She's learned to let go, etc. But that doesn't mean yeah. that I don't want more screen movies. Okay. Well, maybe with some time. I think what happen what needs to happen now is time, right? Some time needs to go by. Let this blow over, and you never know. What if it gets moved to because it's it's Spyglass that yes. owns them. Yes. Or owns, owns however the that works. Yeah. Maybe somebody else will buy it. And then they can bring back the actors. They'll be less busy. It needs time. I think that just that way they can produce a decent movie, whether it's with them or someone else. But at least they did leave it somewhat tidied up. So you're not left with this horrible cliffhanger, which mm. would have been bad. That's very true. For the fans. Yeah. That's very so, true. I'm, sh- I'm certain we will get a Scream 7. I just hope that it's not rushed. and Because these yep. movies make a lot of money. So it's inevitable that they make another one. Yeah. But nonetheless, it saddens me we will likely not for at least for a very long time get to see the progression of this particular storyline, if ever. But um, nonetheless, Scream 6 yep. is my number one movie. I'm very sad that we're not going to have another Scream movie this year because it would be coming out right around now. Um, Mm -hmm. so yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't even know what to, I got Godzilla vs. Kong coming out and Nosferatu's later this year, but really, I don't know what else to to be excited for. So yeah, number, number one, Scream 6. Slim Pickens out there. Didn't we do an episode on Scream 6? Pretty sure we did. I'm certain that we did. I think so. So go check that out too. Right now. Go do it. Pretty sure. We did a lot of episodes last year. Just saying. Did we do? Same. I think we've done an episode on every one of my picks except Exorcist Believer. Yeah, I think we did. Literally, all the major horror movies that came out last year, we did an episode on because we were going to the movies consistently. There and were a lot of movies. You out. either went on Thursday, I went Saturday, and then boom! All right, let's regroup. Let's do this. <laughs> <sighs> Dang it! So it was a good year. It was a good year. Okay, my number one. Okay, can you guess what it is now? Now that I've given you four? Yeah, I think it's Saw 10. It is Saw 10. Yes, <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. It didn't even make my list. It was close, though. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm surprised, but that's fine. And uh, I'm surprised that I picked this because it should be. This is why I struggled with it because Hell House, I rewatched it recently and it's fine. But it's it's the movie theater experience that I had with it. It was a great movie. I loved, as I keep saying, that I sympathized with a serial killer, psychopath, because there's no other explanation for this guy. But the movie manipulated you, or at least me, into feeling sorry for Jigsaw. And mm-hmm. I thought that was played out really well. And then the revenge portion of it, it, it made you root for him still. And made you go, hmm, I see why you're doing it, at least to this school. And it's fantastic. And the kills were brutal. Uh, some of them seemed really impossible to get out of, but that's okay. <laughs> I mean, it is what it is. You say so. I'm with uh, you there, dude. There were like, like the leg what? one and like the brain one. There yes. was a few that it was just like, this is almost impossible. Even if they hadn't messed around for the first yeah. 45 seconds of their two minutes, like it's still... Yeah, he should have given them five minutes, but it just made me wonder if ultimately he didn't really want them to survive that much. Kind of. I mean, he but, I mean was that very... goes against his game. So who knows? Right, And he kept telling Amanda they have to make the games fair, right? Which was cool to see her come back. But nonetheless, like the one with the leg where like, I feel like she cut her leg yeah. off. Like that should have been good enough. She didn't need to stick the pipe up it to get the bone marrow out, right? Like wasn't that yeah. a little too much? It was excessive. It was. That's why I'm saying, like, eh, do that. And the brain one was definitely a lot. Radiation chick, she did pretty good, mm. kind of. But, you know, it was very extreme. But it was fine. And then it was just everybody in the theater was really excited, which then pumped 
you up as a, as an audience together when they played the saw music at the end i didn't realize that they hadn't played it and then they just blasted it really loud when he's you know when he does the montage of oh this is what i've been doing this whole time i had planned everything <laughs> and you're like what it's uh, so amazing <laughs> he got me again <laughs> it's just he got him again <laughs> but uh and then there was the use of uh of the kid and it was somehow lighthearted with that. It's like, there was so many emotions in this movie that I was not expecting to walk into. And the only reason I went to watch it in theater was because it was getting such great reviews. I think you saw it before me, right? I think. I think so. I think I, I went, <laughs> uh, you know what? I went on the Thursday that it came out. I had just tested negative for COVID and I went at like 10 o'clock at night to see it by myself. Okay, then yeah. And then you came. Yes, and then you came and said it was great. So I'm like, all right, let's go see it. I'll go see it. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it was, I don't know, it was a really good year for horror. And I really got to experience and enjoy the movie theater aspect of all these movies, which made it Scream 6 super fun to watch in the theater, at least in my theater. Evil Dead Rise was fun. Insidious, Haunted Mansion. They were all so much fun. I feel like 2023, and I mentioned this before, it was the official year where people were definitely going back mm -hmm. to the movies 100% compared to 2022. So I think that also plays a factor in the success of movies, but Saw 10, number one, very, I think that's an unusual pick for me, but I'll take it. It was a fun-ass movie. Uh, I need to watch it again, actually, just to be like, yes. You go, Jigsaw. You go. Uh, it was a very good movie. Um, <laughs> the storyline, honestly, was really good, which is weird to say about a Saw movie. Right? Like, I feel like all their storylines are pretty decent and how they yeah. intertwine all of them. And But but this one was really, really good. And it, it, it's the first one that Tobin Bell is on screen pretty much the entire movie. And it's... it's yeah. While the stories generally center around him, um, this one, like, he's... It's obviously centers around him, but he's in it like the entire time, which is yep. which is cool to see. But the reason I did not nominate it, I mean, the reason I did not pick it is because I did yep. not nominate it, even as a runner up for anything. And I felt like that if it were really one of my top five, I would have at least nominated it for something, right? Yeah, you would have. So like scream like the other stuff more. Like Scream Six got nominated for three or four different things. Sick got nominated. Cobweb, I I had Lizzie Capel was my runner up for outstanding performance. Evil Dead Rise is my runner up for uh, I think special effects, I think. And then yeah. Exorcist Believer I had nominated Story, for I think. Story. So yeah, I had nominated all of them. Yeah. Uh actually the Pale Blue Eye, which is my my honorable mention, I had originally had it nominated for uh best story i think and then mm. exodus believer kicked it out and then i finally finished the fall of the house of usher and it came in as my um honorable mention behind that so nonetheless yeah nonetheless so that was it. it was a great year for horror movies it's going to be very interesting to see how 2024 uh follows that up and maybe there's we just haven't seen the announcements for them or what but i really think we're gonna see a lull at least the first half of the year um yeah but even like what's been announced i don't know like nosferatu yeah i think that's gonna be great and i think that probably bill skarsgård is gonna get nominated for a, uh, a lot of the stuff on next year's stabbies uh, but yeah, also with Stranger totally. Things coming out, I and it being the final season of Stranger Things, I look for Stranger Things to take most of the stabbies next year. Is it? It's coming out this year or next year? Uh, I thought it was next year. Uh, oh, I thought it was coming out this year because according to according to Mark, it's in post production already. Oh, okay. I mean, I this is coming from the person who hasn't even watched the last season, so. Don't listen to me. Oh, that's right. I still right. haven't watched it. Let's see. I'll look it up on my yeah. phone. That way I don't glitch dance too hard before we get out of here. I don't want to party too hard before bed. Uh, let's see. When is the new <laughs> Stranger Things releasing? I got to rip the Band-Aid and just watch it. It's just they're so long. Mm, <laughs> I could watch I movies during that time <laughs> yep it's not it says uh most likely to be released in early 2025 so no it will not be out this year 
I didn't think so. I thought I had read 2025. So Stranger Things okay. five late 2025 or early 2026. Wow. So it may not be. That's weird. Oh, that wow. it's, they're saying because of all the special CGI that the show requires. Oh, but non non horror wise, mm-hmm. you and I will get our other show back this year. We do get House of oh, the Dragon. House of the Dragon. That's right. Season two. I can't wait Don't for forget. that. That's going to be excellent, dude. Yep. Hmm. that's gonna be a good one so there's right. that to look forward to at least non-horror but hey we do like non-horror things as well we do and i'm sure we there's do. gonna be some sleep surprisingly there, there's gonna be some stuff that gets dropped that we don't know about and maybe on streaming all these streaming yeah. platforms have to keep up with the keep up with their content with the so theater. i don't know i guess we'll see maybe it'll be winnie the pooh blood and honey 2 that wins oh, everything <laughs> for the stabbies next year but i hope sure we- or the mickey mouse there's the Mickey Mouse, the Allison one. There's a bunch of them at this point, so I don't even know. Yeah. But, hmm. but we'll see. that's it. That's our top five favorite movies from 2023. It'll be very interesting to be sitting here at this time next year to see what our top five were from 2024. Um, yeah. I don't know if a year ago we'll I would have been sitting here six. I, one, I wouldn't have even known that Cobweb was coming out because I didn't find that find out about that till i was sitting waiting for insidious to start um right scream six no brainer sick i think i would have already watched right because sick came out in january of 2023 yep yep evil dead probably pretty predictable we we knew about evil dead we knew about insidious the nun two five Mm. nights like we knew about these big movies coming out pretty early on That's why looking at the, I was going to call it the map, like the calendar of movies that are coming out this year, it's just like, what is all this? And I'm all for different horror movies, but they just don't sound, maybe it's the titles, they just don't sound Mm. appealing. Nothing grabs your attention. It's a little, a little underwhelming. Oh, Terrifier 3, I guess that's, that's going to be coming out too. I think a lot of people are excited for that. I know you are not. Um, Or is it? No. Yeah, but you're yeah, not. that is okay. a big one. I, I knew that the yeah, two nah, the two no. chicks, the, the gals, do not like that movie either. But uh, the Elm Street guys and the HMC podcast, that, we really yeah. like it. Um, yeah. So I don't know. It'll be interesting to see. Hopefully, we get something announced here with some some big movies. But it may be just a down year, and then we'll just uh, they'll really ramp it up into 2025. But who knows? Uh, who knows? I'll stay hopeful and watch streaming services. Maybe that's where it's going to be at. Because again, they uh, some heavy ones came out towards the end of the year, and they were you know the Hell House, When Evil Lurks, like they stayed in streaming. Totally killer. Uh, these are movies that came out on the down low. Yeah, but in streaming. True. We'll see. We'll stay hopeful. I'll stay hopeful. <laughs> in that case, is there anything else you want to say before we wrap it up? Nothing on this end. Nothing on this end. Uh, all the patron crewies, I sincerely apologize. I still do not have a, my de- my t- podcast desk is like <laughs> completely cleaned off right now. It's the cleanest it's ever been. It's insane. Um, nice. We re- HMC podcast will be back. Um, let's see in February probably. We've got dates scheduled to record, and those episodes will drop. I think it's Seth's turn to pick. So. The next episode after this will likely be an HMC podcast episode. I don't know what it's going to be, but we haven't recorded since the cabin, so I'm sure it will be very long and very entertaining. So stay tuned for that. Yes. Yes. That's going to be a fun one. (laughs) Maybe. There's going to be a lot of catch. We may not even do a movie. We may just hang out and catch up. Uh, We'll see. (laughs) I don't know. It's going to be a long one. It may be a two-parter. It's going to be so long. But uh, in (laughs) that case... We're out of here. Bye. 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 Bye.